Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. Let's do a little Inside the Trading Room brought to you by Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dr. Austin Crow joining us. So this Paul Skeens cat, he's a pretty good pitcher. Uh, he throws uh, <laughs> throws pretty hard. I mean, so he's a youngster, and I mean, he's throwing over 100 miles an hour, like high 90s and, and anything like that. For all the talk about pitching injuries and, and, and such, would you have any concern about, you know, for how hard he throws about, you know, if he can hold up, if that elbow or shoulder could hold up for how hard he throws? I mean, quick answer is, of course. Um, you know, when, when they put that kind of velocity on an arm, I mean, he um, is built like every other human being. Obviously, not all humans are built the same, right? Those, those athletes have already proven that they're built a little different than the rest of us by getting to where they are. But still, to put that kind of velocity on your arm over and over and over, um, not to say that just because he throws like that, he will. I mean, there's guys like Nolan Ryan who threw that hard dang near his whole career until he was, I don't know, 40, whatever. So it can happen, but that's it's certainly an exception. I'm sure he does a lot of work with um, probably a, the athletic training staff, um, the strength conditioning coaches to try mitigate those risks. Um, but certainly with that kind of velocity, it's always an athlete that you, you know, you never want to say like, oh, he's, you know, went in the eye with a little bit of shoulder el- uh, or elbow soreness. That kind of thing could be the beginning of a, a bigger problem. But as of now, it sure seems like it's holding up pretty well. Yeah, uh, no kidding. And he's developing his own pitch and, and, and all that too. It's just, it's, he, he's awesome to watch unless he's playing your favorite team. And, and yeah, that, that but, uh, you know, Rob Manfred, I know we've talked about, uh, pitching injuries a little bit off and on this season and leading into the all-star break uh, he was answering some questions and and he talked about the rash of uh, baseball pitching injuries and he said the pursuit of spin and velocity are among the the commissioner's uh, concerns uh, some of his quote was I think there's an initial impression about a couple of topics we think in particular the way young people are being trained pre-draft but being trained in general in pursuit of spin and velocity is an issue. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out those are the concerns and we're going to continue there. And that's kind of something that you, you've talked about too, like right, the younger kids learning to throw curveballs at an early age and putting that stress on their elbows. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, a lot of the biggest studies that have been done um, by James Andrews um, down in Birmingham, and their big thing was actually specifically on pitch counts. And so there was a really striking correlation with these young pitchers once they got above a certain number of pitches, both in a week and in a, in a season, um, with UCL injuries, so specific to the elbow. Um, but we, we do know that there is a correlation there. And so that's why, you know, the, the, the docs out there aren't just trying to be, you know, mean and, and shutting kids down. We're trying to protect elbows. And it's, it's one of those things. Not every single kid who throws over that has an elbow problem. So, you know, you might be hear people say, like, when I was a kid, I threw, you know, 500 innings a week or something crazy, mm-hmm. right? But – so just because someone else did doesn't mean it's a good idea. It just increases the risk of injury substantially. So that's why a lot of those, like Little League Baseball, Babe Ruth, all those baseball leagues have instituted these rules because we know that it does protect the elbow. Um, now, here's the difference, though. Once you get to the point where you're no longer in Little Leagues and you're in Major League Baseball, um, those athletes are trying to earn a paycheck. So you know, once the guys are all the way on the top of the mountain and, and then you start looking at, you know, load management and kind of picture where people will get, you know, pulled early to protect the elbow. But when guys are working their way up the system, I mean, they need to prove themselves, right? So they want to throw as hard as they can with as much break as they can. And so that's why we do see a lot of those injuries. And, and, and that's what you get when you push the human body to its limits. So uh, not to be flippant about it, I mean, we care about those injuries, but those, those come and it's a natural consequence of that, that, that they're trying to push – their bodies to the absolute limit, and sometimes that is just one step too far. I, I know this might be kind of a speculation question, but like I don't know if you saw like Paul Skeen's pre-workout, you know, sort of thing. I mean, some of these pitchers have some unique workouts to, to warm up and get ready. Like 
He's got like a backpack on. It looks like he, it almost looked like a scuba thing on the top there, but it's got you know he's he's doing. Some <laughs> I've weird... not seen that, but it sounds interesting. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, and he's doing some weird stuff, and I've I've seen guys using like uh, like a like a, it almost looks like a weighted golf swing sort of thing. I mean, is this? Do you think that's just trial and error? They try these different things to to warm up, or is this something that is actually like trainers are out there saying, "Hey, you got to do this to warm up this certain area of the body or this shoulder and and, and all that sort of stuff." I'm sure there's thoughts behind it. I don't know if there's necessarily science and studies behind it. That being said, there's no question good warm-up and stretching is incredibly critical for all all athletes, but especially pitchers, so throwing arms. And so there's there's a number of stretches that I show a lot of my patients to try to decrease the risk of, of shoulder and elbow issues. Um, and so, I mean, however you want to get there, I guess there's a, probably a lot of ways to skin that cat, but... If, if someone's going out there relatively cold turkey, that's a terrible idea. And, that, and, you know, with younger athletes, I mean, a lot of them don't warm up as much as you like. I mean, even my own kid, I'm trying to tell him to stretch, and he's like, yeah, sure, and he just doesn't do it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's hard to get him to do a really good warm-up. But like a lot of things, when you look at it, prevention is way better than treatment. So if you can prevent shoulder and elbow problems, and one of the best ways to do it is stretching, and that's, again, across the board. I know we're talking about pitchers and arms, but, I, you know, all athletes – a good warm up, a good cool down, that goes a long way to preventing both acute injuries and kind of tendon and, and muscle based problems. So it's it is critical and, and those those training staffs have clearly worked with those pitchers and you know, to your first question is, you know, is he at high risk? Of course, but what are the ways he can prevent that? That's probably the biggest one is doing really good warm ups, keeping that shoulder and elbow loose and, and that's gonna be uh, hopefully the way he prevents having those problems. Uh, switching gears here a little bit, we got the Olympics coming up at at the end of the month here, and, and something we've been having a little fun this week talking about is the twenty twenty eight Olympics actually, and when flag football's here, and all these NFL players that that want to play uh, in the Olympics for for flag football, uh, just uh, pretend you were with say you you were the head doc with with your Minnesota Vikings, and Justin Jefferson mm-hmm. says he wanted to play in the twenty twenty eight uh, Olympics in flag football. Would you be concerned about uh, your your player playing in that due to some injury uh, risks or, or concern? Because I, I feel like these NFL teams may not want their star players to go out there and, and play for a gold. I mean, I think it's a lot like the Olympics in basketball um, or any other major sports hockey. I mean, I know there's teams that have expressed a desire for their star athlete not to participate. Um, but I think at the end of the day, representing your country is an important thing to do as well. If you're looking at simply from an injury you know, risk standpoint, it's there. I mean... And those guys are going to be cutting, juking. I mean, that's what flag football is all about, right? Sharp angles, mm-hmm. pivoting, twisting, explosive movement. So, yeah, I mean, that's those are relatively high risk. It's it's designed, of course, to be low or no impact, but, you know, people are going to probably run into each other. Someone might get their leg rolled up on. So, I mean, if you're saying doing that versus not, I mean, of course, playing is going to have a higher risk of injury, but I don't see flag football as being super, super high risk. We do see a good number of injuries in, in our clinics from it, but a lot of times that's because, you know, it's like guys trying to be weekend warriors playing with their kids and, you know, they're 40 years old and the 40 year old body just isn't what it used to be. So, I mean, <laughs> there's that, but these guys are all at peak condition. So I think it's going to be okay. Will you see injuries? Absolutely. You will. Um, just like you do on any, any sport that goes on to the Olympics. So I, I, I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if you see some teams probably raise their eyebrows and maybe even make some comments like Puri doesn't, but. At the end of the day, I think there'll probably be some backlash from that as well. I think people want to see their country uh, do well in the Olympics, and I find it hard to believe anyone would be able to hang with us in flag football, but I guess you never know. People say that about basketball mm-hmm. forever, and uh, the U.S. is not necessarily um, invulnerable, certainly. Yeah, that's, and that was the other part of me. I, I was kind of wondering, too. It's like, okay, that's that's our sport. If we get embarrassed with with our sport, I, you know, what would the reaction be like that? Like, I almost feel like they would want you know to put out their best, but then it, we might just dominate so much that maybe they get rid of it after the first year though too. Because I was trying. Well, to... I mean, you know, we, yeah, I mean, we used to do that in basketball, right? I mean, mm-hmm. remember back in the day, and all of a sudden people have caught up, and I'm sure the NFL has probably pushed that a little bit, maybe to get a little more national or I'm sorry, international exposure, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if we don't win the first, it's like the dream team. I mean, that's that's really what it's going to be. I mean, they'll probably come up with some cool name for them along those lines. I can't think of some funny pun off the top of my head, but it'll be something like that because, I mean, that team should mop up everybody. Um, but maybe as, as time goes along, then all of a sudden the, the playing field gets a little more leveled. I mean, 
I remember when the the U.S. basketball team lost their first couple of games. I mean, it was like the people were in shock, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it was like, how how is that even possible? Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, why are people still talking about Aaron Rodgers' Achilles injury? Is it just because he's Aaron <laughs> Rodgers right now? Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, it's it's Rodgers has got to be in the news for something, right? There's yeah, attention. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point. I mean, he's golfing be, this weekend, so I mean, you yeah, know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it being a huge problem. I mean, it, it just there's you know the media's got to talk about something, and and uh, I guess that's going to be the hot button topic. But I I, I think it, I don't envision it being a huge problem for him. I mean, is he going to still probably even now this far out from the injury? I mean, he's you know by the time the season starts, of course, he'll be basically a year out from the injury. Um, no question, he'll still. I mean, if they did side to side leg testing, he's probably going to lack a little bit of explosiveness now. We all know Rodgers, although he is mobile, he's not a true sc- scrambling quarterback, so I don't see it affecting his game much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see how he bounces back, but I expect him to do well. And, um, you know, there, it is funny. I mean, the, the, he, with that discussion of that speed bridge, I mean, I, the last couple of Achilles ruptures I've taken care of, my patients have asked me, hey, what about that? Um, so it's, <laughs> his, his comments have worked their way into my practice, but it's, it's just interesting stuff how that works. Because I feel like we're still talking about that one and not as much about Kirk Cousins, and he was the dude that, that tore it more recently. So I was yeah, like, I, yeah, I, yeah. I see it still on Twitter, like, is he going to be ready for week one? I'm like, why would he be ready for, for week one at this point? Well, yeah, he said he was ready to play last year, right? I mean, yeah. he should, of course, be totally ready. I, it's, it is what it is. I mean, he, you know, he's in New York, the biggest media uh, place in the U- in the U.S., so I, it, it's going to be – they got to talk about something. I guess they'll put it that way. Yeah, uh, this was a couple weeks ago, but I, I wanted to, to get your thoughts on it. So Fernando Tatis Jr. he was put on the injured list uh, with what they called a stress reaction in the thigh bone. Can you explain what what that is? Yeah, so stress reaction is basically on the spectrum of a stress fracture. So when we in the femur, you said the femur. Yeah, I said thigh bone. So. Yeah, the thigh, yeah, which is the femur. That's really atypical. Um, so, you know, anytime you load the body, we damage it, right? That's what happens. Every step you take, you damage the skin, the muscles, the tendons, the bone. Now, bone is very strong, right? We, we walk on our bodies, and luckily they are able to withstand that. When we put stresses on it that exceed our body's ability to kind of fully rebound and heal, you can create this little kind of differential. And over time, that can lead to problems. Now, when it's in the tendon, then you have a tendinopathy. When it's in the bone, you develop stress fractures. So we commonly see that in runners. I mean, that's by far, or explosive sports like basketball, high-impact things like that. To have it in baseball, certainly a typical in the femur is also a very weird place to have it. Um, we do see it commonly in the feet, um, in the tibia. I mean, quote-unquote shin splints, that's really what it is. It's, it's what's called medial tibial stress syndrome or a stress reaction. Um, so to, to explicitly answer your question, it's basically the beginning of a stress fracture. So the loading of the bone is causing basically micro damage to the bone, you get inflammation and pain, um, but in the hip, I mean, not to say we don't see it. We we will see it usually up around the hip. But again, I've only seen that in you know high volume runners, and we all know baseball players aren't that. Mm-hmm, <laughs> At least right. maybe he's training on the on the side doing that. So, yeah, that would be very interesting. Now, the, the thigh bone, quote unquote, of the femur is long, right? It goes from the knee all the way to the hip. So, could it be something involving a joint issue um, potentially? So, if it's on one of the ends, it's still the femur, but Usually then they'll call it the knee or the hip. So it must be kind of in more of the shaft area or the diaphysis. So, geez, I, I'll, I'll read into that and see. That's a really atypical uh, place to develop it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so what they have to do basically is, is what I just talked about. So you have the damage and the healing. It's really hard to just ramp up your bone healing, right? That's not the way it works unless he has some kind of vitamin D or calcium deficiency, which I'm sure they're looking at and treating. Um but you basically have to flip it and reduce the damage, so you shut it down. So you basically take an athlete and say, all right, we're going to shut your body down, and the body should heal that very well, so I don't see it being a long-term problem. But you do have to ask yourself, why is this athlete getting it? Um, you know, certainly we can see, you know, vitamin D deficiencies can correlate with that to a certain degree, but even so, in a in an athlete at that level that develop a stress reaction in the femur is really atypical. Interesting. So, good stuff as always, man. Hey, Dr. Crow, Inside the Training Room, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week, and we'll catch up with you again soon, okay? Absolutely. Have a great one. You too. There you go. Dr. Crow. Love talking with Dr. Crow every Friday.
Good stuff as always. Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? <sighs> Ooh, a book club. <sighs> Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, <sighs> oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchases, only by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.